introduce uh, Nancy Slotnick uh, of Matchmaker Cafe. Thanks. And thank you again, John and Janice, for having me and Matchmaker Cafe in this uh, accelerator. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so Matchmaker Cafe is a dating app where we actually uh, set up real dates in the real world. Um, so that is our mission, more dates. Um, the online dating sites and apps have become really proliferant. It's big business, but um, one of the things from being in the industry as long as I've been that I've discovered and that the data has shown is that there are not a lot of real dates happening. Not everyone who signs up for online dating seems to want dates, um, but about probably a third of um, people that sign up do not even ever have a date in, in their entire online dating experience. And then another 45% um, have maybe one or two dates. Usually they don't go so well. And, um, and then you know people end up saying, oh, online dating didn't work for me. So there's a lot of um, chatting, messaging, profile looking, and all that, which is great. But uh, people want real dates, and we want to make that happen. So um, our secret sauce um, from my uh, experience in the industry is that uh, scheduling is really kind of the, the key to making the dates happen, that people, when they're speaking with someone new, even if you're trying to schedule something when you've got two busy people and your friends, uh, that can be complicated. But when you're trying to schedule something with somebody you don't know and you have to chat back and forth and kind of vet them a little bit to see if they're really going to show up and then... You maybe talk on the phone, but maybe you play phone tag for a couple of weeks before you do talk on the phone, and so it never ends up really happening. So we have people actually sign up with a date that they are available, and then the other people can browse by when the date is happening along with uh, the profile. And, and a lot of these apps where you have what they call uh, like Tinder, which is one of, one of the newer dates, uh, dating apps that's maybe a little more hookup oriented. Um, but even even with those, um, there you might have what they call double opt-in, where both people have said that they're interested in each other and it still doesn't turn into a date. So um, so we have kind of the software and the, the approach to make this more automated process. Um, so my team is mostly myself <laughs> for now. I've had a lot of experience in the industry, so I um, have kind of, um, you know, a, a unique perspective on what's needed. Um, but I also have enlisted someone who uh, used to run a company at IAC, and IAC actually uh, owns all the major, major players in the market right now, uh, Match.com, OkCupid, and Tinder are all owned by IC, so I kind of wanted to get an inside look at what that company is like, and so um, that's where I enlisted Sarah. Uh, Justin is my technology partner. He has a full-time job as a CTO, but he built the app that we've already launched that exists now, and he's very involved with helping me uh, get all the tech people that I need to make modifications and, and to do future um, you know, expansion. I'm, I'm open to bringing on a different technology partner, but um, but outsourcing also works with Justin Paul. And uh, my TV industry partners is uh, kind of an exciting twist. Is that uh, based on a pop up cafe that I did last year, um, an outdoor space um, with the concept? I got a lot of publicity, and we were offered a development deal for a reality TV show based on Matchmaker Cafe. So. Um, and so Patty Stanger herself, the millionaire matchmaker, I don't know if any of you recognize her, um, is actually my uh, partner on the TV side. And uh, we have a production company that's doing a sizzle reel and we're pitching it around. So now I have to make sure that the business um, is actually as interesting as the reality show based on the business so, and to be able to leverage that to capitalize on the, you know, what, what kind of what that can bring. Um, so the online dating market is, is very large, and um, it's $2 billion just in this country alone, and um, the millennials is kind of the key demographic that we're focusing on, um, because there's not, some of the big traditional players like Match.com and eHarmony 
don't have great brand equity with millennials. So if you can kind of stay relevant and target the way that millennials date and meet each other, um, but with actual dates as opposed to, uh, like I was saying about Tinder, um, which is a little more hookup y, um, then there's, there's a unique opportunity there. And, um, you know, finally, our, our um, revenue model is uh, twofold there's subscription. Um, we're, we're kind of a freemium business, but uh, the subscription is $9.95 a month, so it's very reasonable uh, compared to other sites and especially compared to matchmakers. So, and then as well, we have a lot of revenue that comes from doing pop up cafes and uh, food and beverage revenue that happens in uh, in our marketing efforts, and there could be a whole other sort of revenue side to the food beverage angle, which is uh, when I did cafe years ago, uh, was very lucrative. So uh, we're kind of looking at both of those revenue streams to try to see which one uh, works best and how to get them to support each other. So thank you very much. <laughs>